Hi, everyone. I'm so excited. We're letting everyone into the room right now. So we're going to go. Oh, my gosh. I want to see in the chat. How many Queller webinars have you attended in the past 10 days? Five, six, seven. Anybody who can tell us? A lot. Who has seen a lot of Queller webinars? How about we just use the word a lot? Because I can't even quantify how many we've had in the past few days. Who has attended a lot of webinars? Who was who who attended yesterday? Yesterday was good. The lottery. Who did that one? You know Olga's gonna do two more, right? But aren't you glad? I think we can just keep this open. We can just chat with everyone because I am so drained. Oh, that's fine. We'll do chat with everyone. Do you like it? Do you because we're waiting for a few more people to join? Do you guys like it? Do you feel like do you feel like you're getting everything you need to study? Are you gonna miss us when this is over? <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Yes. They're gonna miss us. You see that? We're just going to wait for a few more people, okay? And then we're going to join. See, they are going to miss us. Olga, I'm going to miss you too. I'm going to keep doing <laughs> Olga. Do you guys want to know why? Because um, I'll tell you why. Because the Hunter exam is um, coming up. So I'm going to see more of Olga again. And we're like besties. We become besties. We are work besties, Olga. Did you ever think you'd have a work bestie? <laughs> <laughs> Not like You're this, not a virtual need, work. We need friends when you have coworkers, right? We don't need friends. We got coworkers. We're good to go, right? Oh, boy. All right. Yesterday, there were 150 people in the Zoom. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, my God. I love Sai Laxini. I just want you to know I'm looking. Thank you. That's so kind. If you want, you can leave us a Google review. Say Olga is the coolest in the review. Okay. So are we going to wait another minute or no? We're going to wait one more minute. Yeah, Deal? We'll, we'll, get, we'll get another 60 seconds and we'll get started. Do you like how Olga decorated with ocean pictures? Because it's a relaxing. This is a relaxed webinar. We're going to learn strategies so that we make sure that we are relaxed. Good? Oh, my God. I love it. Look at the enthusiasm. Look at the children. We love the children. Thank you, guys. Th who, who has attended a lot of webinars? We're not even going to count them because I've lost track. Who has attended a lot of Queller webinars? A lot of Queller webinars. That's actually the quantifier. I've attended a lot of webinars, too. I think I deserve a plus one because I have a lot going on. And I have been your IT tech supports for many of these webinars. And we I've added definitely attended a lot of these webinars. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Olga, I think you're like my most frequent like phone contact, <laughs> to be honest <laughs> with you. Oh my God. All right. Yesterday we had 150 people. So today, not so many because um, there's apparently the Bronx Science Open House and that one's going to be a big audience of people. So I'm just letting you know. All right. So guess what? It is 7.04. I think we gave everyone enough time. I'm also going to send a reminder out. Olga, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for being my um, webinar bestie and doing literally a webinar every other day, sometimes every day. So we're very excited. I'm really excited to review stress reductions. By the way, don't worry. Oh, I found this program helpful. Wait, can you please, please, please post a Google review? Because with our name, um, look at how nice this is. Thank you guys so much. Wait, Olga, can you put chat with everyone? Let's. This is a small group. We'll do a chat I, with I everyone. I put chat with everyone. You guys can chat. Wait, can you retype it? I found this program very helpful. Look, it helps me improve my SHSAT score by a lot. Thank you so much. If it wasn't for all the tutors, I probably wouldn't be here right now. Oh my God, that's so good. I love you guys. Oh my gosh, I'm going to give you guys the Google stuff. I We do, we want the reviews because then people are like, Olga's very young and she is too young and da da da. And I'm like, no, she's a pro. All right. Mm -hmm. And um, and people don't always think that I'm the boss. Like, I don't know, but they just don't. So I just want you to know, I want some love too. That's so nice. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate this. All right, ready? I just want you to know the webinar that we're going to have I hand typed every single word. So every single word of this webinar is from the heart. Okay. So I just want you to know that. 
So Olga, please get started. I'm not kidding when I tell you every single word in this webinar is so meaningful and so intentional. And I actually used these stress reduction techniques when I sat for not forget about SHSAT. I use them before my SATs and my PSATs, my LSAT to become a lawyer for the bar. So I learned all of this and this is a compilation of everything, okay? So Olga, please, without further ado, take over. Thank you so much. And I am gonna put the review, if you could take a minute to give us a nice review, I appreciate it because um, these are a lot of webinars, I can't even count, okay? Olga, thank you so much. We are ready to learn, okay, go ahead. So hi, everybody. It's so nice to see all of you guys again uh, virtually. Today's webinar is a little bit different, so we're not going as intense as usual. Today is all about learning how to relax, um, as you guys can see by the vibes that I put out on this paper. Um, and echoing what Ms. Queller said, um, I've also sat for many, many exams. To be a doctor, you have to take three board exams. Um, so I am two out of three done. <laughs> but every single time I find myself going back to these same techniques to kind of center myself and make sure that I walk into the exam being able to be my best self. And that allows me to, you know, score, perform my best while still, you um, you know, not losing sight of my final goals and not losing like everyday happiness and joy, because that's what's most important for us. We want you all to succeed, but we want you all to be happy as you do it as well. Um, and I'm really happy to be hosting, especially this webinar, because I think it's something really, really important. And the younger that you learn how to manage your stress, the easier it is for you guys to become superheroes, because that's some of the the biggest struggles that I've, I've had in my like academic careers. So all of these words are handwritten by Mrs. Queller, and that's what we're going to be going through. And I'll be annotating and kind of giving you guys um, my two cents from my own experiences and how I've incorporated these tips into my studying and stress management and how I think that this should apply to you guys as you go on to study for the SHSAT in these final days, especially in these final days when I feel like the stress peaks um, and it's most important to manage that stress as you go into test day so it doesn't impact your score. And if you guys have any questions or comments, because we're a smaller group, you guys can feel free to type in the chat um, and I'll be answering them as we go. And then we can also save some time for questions at the end as well. So the very first tip that we have here for you is um, about what you should do the day before the exam. And this stress management tip is that the day before the exam, you guys need to take it very, very easy and avoid studying anything new the day before the test. So when you're planning your studying, you should absolutely not be deciding that the day before the test is when you're going to read this new chapter um, in the Queller Review book for math and learn everything there is to do with geometry. Um, so that's a big, big, big no-no. So the day before the exam is all about centering. You can do light review. So you can review um, the way that we did in our previous webinars, you can review strategies, you can review formulas, you can review things that I've told you to memorize, you can review some light grammar rules that you know that you always forget, things like that. But you're definitely not, not, not going to try to teach yourself something brand new the night before the exam or the day before the exam. So um, light review means maximum one to two hours a day, uh, one to two hours the day before the test. You should not be studying 10 hours. You should not be doing a full length practice test and reviewing the whole thing the day before. Um, we do not want you to burn yourselves out the day before. And we also don't want you to create unnecessary anxiety and jitters for yourself because sometimes if you perform poorly the day before, you can psych yourself out. And even things that you know you could just it just could cause more and more jitters and then it will force you guys to underperform on test day so it's time to give your brain a much needed break after these extensive um, weeks and weeks of studying and the day before you should just relax and lightly review so that's what i'm going to write for you guys big and red here so day before is for relaxing and light review.
So I'm just going to read this with you guys to see if we missed anything. So like I said, students should refrain from studying anything new the day before the test. Students can lightly review old Queller Prep SHSAT materials or actual SHSAT exams. Students should avoid spending 10 hours studying SHSAT the day before the test. By studying intensely, they will likely burn themselves out. Brain muscles need a break too. Students should skim, not study. Research shows that learning brand new content the day before the exam hurts students because it crowds their short-term memory with last minute information. So this is something that I really, really, really wanna highlight. Um, because I'm somebody that studies medicine, I think it's so important to turn to like evidence or research when we teach you guys how to like I call the basically it's like life hacks, real life hacks for you guys to perform very, very well. And this is a life hack. Understanding how your brain and memory works is a life hack to perform well on exams. So you don't want to fill your short term memory um, with stuff and push the long term things that you have known for have learned and have studied studied for weeks and weeks and months and months um, and make you perform poorly the day of the test. So no new content and no cramming the night before, just light review. Um, students have learned everything they possibly can at this point. This is another really, really, really important um, point. I'm going to star it all around. Um, you guys, we are so proud of you and you should be proud of yourselves. You're going to school, you're studying for this exam on the weekend, every weekend, you're taking three hour long practice tests, and then you're spending your evening seven to nine with me and Miss Queller, um, and you're forcing to learn more and more and more, and you're taking such an active role in your education, and we are all proud of you, and you've, you've done the work, and you've known, you know what you need to know to do well on this test. So the night before, you don't need to cram, and you don't need to psych yourself out. Just light review. Now for the parents, parents should remind their children that they did everything possible. Students have completed several practice tests. They've sacrificed weekends. They've sacrificed evenings. Um, and hours before the test is not the time to really commit yourself to um, studying more and more and more. Um, finally, on this slide, we are suggesting that words have power. So positive self-speech is really, really important. Um, the more you talk about yourselves positively, the po the more positive outlook you guys have, the more self-confidence you have walking into test day, um, the less nervous you'll be and the better your score will, will be. So we want to remind everybody to engage in positive self-talk, keep your energy high, keep the atmosphere at home good, remind your children that they are superheroes for trying, for just trying to take this difficult, difficult exam. Um, and refrain from any late night cramming the night before the big test day. Um, so again, this advice is for parents and students alike. So I know the atmosphere at the house can get very stressful before a big exam. That happens to me and my family all the time. So students remind your parents to relax and parents remind your children to relax. So that way everybody goes into test day with a positive leveled head. I want to add something as well. So we all have these situations where we have these like high stress friends and they'll kind of psych you out right before the test. I'm giving you permission to be selfish on test day and really like you see them on caller ID, like don't pick up the night before the test. It's like you just you just don't need the drama. You don't need someone crying. You don't need someone stressed. You really need to protect your peace. So Olga, if you could even write it down. I love that phrase, protect your peace. Oh, deaf. Speaking of protecting your peace, do not watch the news. No, no matter what you do. OK, do not watch the news. The, do, like bad news is just amazing for like ratings and they love putting bad news on the internet because like everyone's going to watch nobody's going to watch good news right so do not go in to instagram do not go into tiktok do not no matter what you do do not like get sucked into like social media just protect your peace and we're going to go into more depth Again, with any friends or anyone who calls you, this is not the time to pick up the phone. I'm not 
listen, I'm all about like being nice and kind, but like not right before the test. So right before the test, you need to make yourself, if you could write that down, also make yourself number one, make your Zen, Z-E-N, the number one priority in your life. Your most important priority right now is yourself. Okay. It's all about like you and you being in the right mental state for this exam. So protect your peace. If your brother or sister or somebody wants to pick a fight with you, don't let anyone zap your energy either. Energy zappers are totally like right before you're doing something. Don't let someone take away the energy. Don't let someone take the good vibes. And if you know someone is negative or overly negative, just stay away from them. It's a very like practical thing. I just, you just don't want to hear negative, like speak to them later. You can always speak to a negative person later, just not before the test. Like you just don't want that bad energy. All right. So just remember that protect your peace and stay away from negative um, energy of any kind. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so this is what you should not be looking at like the day before the test. Um, so I'm going to put a big X through this slide. So no coffee or whatever is in this cup the night before, freaking yourself out, studying, no big books. Um, you should look more like this page. <laughs> this is the vibes that you should be emulating the day before. Yeah, that is so funny. It's true. And there's no way that you're going to learn everything the night before. By the way, it's totally okay to review. Like we're going to review a DOE exam, slow, calm, review Pythagorean theorem, a straight lines, 180 degrees, like stuff that you know, we're definitely going to review, but there's no way that you should be cramming the night before to learn everything. Like it is, it's also just bad for your health overall. It's like very, very, very bad for your health. Do not do some kind of stress study the night before the test. Go ahead. Okay. So the next one is more of just a practical tip about your, you being as prepared as possible for test day and what you should bring with you. So preparation is really, really important. And honestly, even for my med school exams and like my big ones, my board exams, like I'll sit with my parents the night before and I'm like, okay, what do I need? I need my admissions ticket. I need like water with me. I need an ID or, or whatever it is that I need. And I sit with my family and I plan all that out the night before um, or the day, even the day before. So I know that I'm well, well, well prepared. And I give myself like 12 hours to think about it before I have to go to sleep and wake up the next morning to make sure that I'm not missing anything um, for my exam. And actually, like when I took the SAT back in high school, um, and I didn't know color prep, and I, I wasn't exposed to this, and I was doing all this by myself, I actually forgot um, my admissions ticket or my ID or something. Um, and luckily, I got to the test site early enough, but like my dad had to drive back home, like grab it for my mom and like come back. And it was the most stressed, like out of everything I've been through, even like somebody that's about to graduate med school right now, I will never forget that moment as a junior in high school, like standing there, like not knowing if I would take this test that I really prepared for. And it's absolutely the worst experience to have that I don't wish on any of you. It's so stressful. And then even though everything worked out for me, just taking the test with like all that extra adrenaline that I already you're already anxious before a test and now like having all that extra it was just like one of the worst testing experiences I've ever had so absolutely um we do not want you guys to be in that position so how do we prepare for it so if you are taking the SHSAT at your local public school on Wednesday November 8th um, you just have to show up and take the paper version of the test. In those cases, you do not need to print a ticket. So you don't need to be freaking out about the ticket. In those cases, you do not need to print a ticket. However, um, if you are not a public school student and you're taking your test instead on the weekend, um, you should print a hard copy of your admissions ticket. And once you print that admissions ticket, you need to make sure that everything is correct. So your name is correctly spelled, correctly written, everything matches, the date is correct, um, just to make sure that you're squared away and that you can deal with any of those discrepancies in a calm matter before the test instead of like the morning of the test when you're scrambling to walk into the room and, and actually take it. 
Um, what else should we bring to the test? You guys need a number two pencil. We recommend that you guys bring at least five because you never know what's going to happen. It's better to be overprepared than underprepared. One pencil could break. One pencil could be uncomfortable for you guys to write with. Another pencil could have a really bad eraser. So five just puts you in a nice safe zone. You want a high quality eraser. Your bubble sheet is the absolute most important thing that comes out of this test. It doesn't matter if you circle all the answers correctly on your booklet. The only thing that will be graded is your bubble sheet. So if you're changing any answers, you want to make sure that you have a high quality eraser so you can entirely get rid of your first bubble um, and make sure that the Scantron or the, the bubble sheet is read correctly by the machine that's going to be grading you. You want to have your student ID. Um, and then favorite snacks, um, they just help you get through the day. You have something to look forward to. They keep your blood sugar up. They keep your brain active and awake. Um, so favorite snacks for either right before or after the test and a small water bottle because, of course, you want to be hydrated and comfortable um, and um, and not. And if your favorite snack is chocolate, I was really stressed yesterday during the high school lottery webinar and I had like chocolate. Like it's fine. It was like half a bar. It's all good. I don't do it every day, but I was super stressed and I don't know. I just, I, I needed to like have something sweet and I, I needed chocolate and it just like works. So if at the end of the day, like I'm not saying if you feel like a little piece of chocolate is going to make you feel instantly better, go have it. If you feel like some Doritos are going to do the job, go have it. Now's not the time to count a few calories before the test. Now's not the time to count your, you know, just if you feel like this like sour patch or like a Nerns or like, I don't know, whatever, like garbage candy, warheads, if you are sour something, if you feel like that's going to make you quickly feel better, just go for it. Because now's your chance. It's all about at the moment, you just want to feel good. Do whatever you need to do so that you feel good. And Twizzlers, I mean, I don't know, Olga, do you have like a specific snack that you gravitate towards when you're doing testing? I mean, I'm a huge fan of chocolate. It's actually, I mean, not bad for you, especially if you eat dark chocolate. It's literally stimulating to your brain. Um, it, it has so many benefits. It increases your mood. Um, I'm not saying you need to, you know, eat a pound of Hershey's a day, but dark chocolate is absolutely good for you. Um, healthy. There's so much research brain. supporting it also. Yeah. So I'm just telling mm -hmm. you, if you need to have a little extra snack, don't feel guilty or badly about it. It's just this one time. Um, and we are going to speak about food, but just remember, like you can pack a little bit of snack that's like sugary while you're testing so that you just keep going. And I don't it, it gives you the energy to keep going also because you need that like sugar. Otherwise you like crash. Yeah. So oh. keep that in mind as well. And we're not telling you to do this seven days a week with regards to the pencils. I just don't see what the big deal is. Like take five pencils, take 10 pencils, like who cares? Whatever you don't use, you'll simply like take it back home. So it's not a big deal. They're probably not gonna let you eat during the test, but right before you start the test, you get to eat. And as soon as you're done with the test, you get to eat. So you'll have that option like right before. So you don't want a situation, we're gonna talk about this more later, but yeah, we'll talk about food later. But the last thing you want is to create a situation where you're not you don't have access to pencils. Um, I don't like mechanical pencils. I like sharpened wood pencils. Mechanical pencils are so light and you can barely see the print. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not a fan of those mechanical pencils at all. So just stick to the regular traditional wood pencils that everyone has used. And I really like starting a section with a, with a sharp pencil. I feel like it's very like powerful. Like you're starting the, I don't want to have like a pencil that needs to be sharpened halfway or towards the end of the test. I like to start a brand new section with a sharp pencil. Like I'm good to go. All right. You can keep going. Um, we're going to talk about that as well. I also just want to remind you, because we are finishing up with the webinars, I did put the um, link into the chat. I'm going to put it into the chat again, because we're done and we want to, you know, we want to enjoy our reviews. We're going to keep going. We're going to reply to the questions in a little bit. Okay, go ahead. 
Yeah, um, a hundred percent agree with the snack. Also, just like this tip is all about being practical and prepared. So you don't want to, you know, pack a pizza or a five course meal with you, especially for that little boost of energy right before the test. You want to do something that is small, that's appropriate, um, that you're able to, you know, open up, eat and and dispose of quickly um, or store in an appropriate manner on the test. So don't pack, you know, 17 sandwiches and like one bottle of water and one bottle of coffee, like it's appropriate, right? The exam is three hours. So you can 100% pack like a little snack for before and after um, a fruit for before and after whatever is your own cup cup of tea, um, but be appropriate and refrain from overeating or over drinking right before the test. Um, you don't want to create a situation where your stomach is unsettled or rumbling, or you have to, you know, you're uncomfortable because you're hungry and your stomach's making noises and you feel like you're disturbing the other students, or you feel like you have to run to the bathroom every five seconds because you drank so much water out of nerves. So just be appropriate and be mindful of what you're eating or drinking and understand that your nerves can um, change how much you want to eat or drink but it's your job to sort of you know manage yourself and do what's best um, walking into the exam um, if you're one of the students who don't have a school ID or any ID at all um, in that case you should just bring your admissions ticket and the way that you access your admissions ticket is via my schools on the dashboard, you'll be able to print your admissions ticket and they'll become available about a whole week before your test date. So it's a, a bit too early right now, so I wouldn't go looking for them, but in about a week or 10 days, they should be posted there. So you should start checking in about a week um, just to make sure that you see your admissions ticket um, and just so you can double check that admissions ticket for all the information and that you could print it early. Um, it's important that you guys do not wait until the last minute to print your admissions ticket. Um, we cannot rely on the My Schools website. It has a tendency to crash. There are tens of thousands of students who log on to this website. Um, and a lot of people are, you know, have the idea that they're going to print it the night before their exam. So when the website gets a lot of traffic and thousands of people on it at the same time, it might just crash. And then you'll be in a spot where you're really stressed out the night before your test um, because you don't have access to your admissions ticket. So try to do it as early as possible. And here's a little screenshot of, of what that could look like. Um, and this honestly is another life hack for like any exam that you take. I had the same exact situation happen. I'm in the middle of applying to residency now. And the night before the application was due, the website just crashed and people were just freaking out. So the best way to approach all of these situations is to always print early, apply early, um, just be on the safe side, because ultimately that will protect your peace. Um, regardless of the application deadline or the test, you just don't want to be in that situation where you're freaking out because the website doesn't work. Um, okay. Um, and then these are just um, screenshots of saying the same thing that we just talked about. Don't forget to register for the SHSAT. I'm sure you guys all ha have already. Um, this is what that registration receipt looks like. And don't forget to access your um, admissions, um, your test ticket, um, your admission test ticket uh, about a week from today. Okay, so this tip is pandemic edition, right? So even though we are a few years post the initial hit of COVID, um, the pandemic is something that, you know, has impacted all of our lives forever. And that's why we included this stress management tip number three. So the year that COVID hit, the SHSAT um, was moved and masks were required. Um, this was similar for many other exams. Uh, for my first board exam, masks were required. Um, since then, masks are no longer required, um, but a lot of people may still feel more comfortable in a mask going out in public. So we just recommend that you pack one just in case. Um, so you don't know who you're going to be sitting next to. Maybe the, the person next to you is going to be sneezing and you're very uncomfortable um, or it's just better to be overprepared than underprepared. So just pack a mask. 
Um, at the same time, you want to pack an extra hand sanitizer. You don't know how clean your situation is, especially if you want to have the snack right before um, or right after the test. You just want to be as safe as possible. Um, so just pack an extra hand sanitizer if you can. Um, and like what we were saying before, just pack everything extra. So there's no harm of bringing extra pencils, another eraser, an extra snack, whatever you don't use, you can just take back home. You can share with a friend. Um, so again, all of this is just for your own safety. I wouldn't go overboard. Like, I don't think that you need to pack your entire like medicine cabinet, um, but just things that are appropriate, like a small hand sanitizer and a mask. Um, is more than appropriate. Uh, if you want to do some hand sanitizing wipes instead of a mask, that's, I mean, instead of a hand sanitizer, that's appropriate as well. Um, okay, so now moving on to stress management tip number four. So this is another life hack, and this is using music to train our brain um, to be happier and to be calmer. Um, before your big test. So listening to relaxing music um, can 100% prime your brain and put yourself into the relaxing mood. I actually usually do this in the evenings to help me wind down for my day. Um, what works for me is classical music. So that's what I'm gonna put up here, classical music. Another type of music that I like a lot that helps me to relax is something called lo-fi. And I actually use this sometimes even when I'm light studying or reviewing. And there's like a very cute, um, you guys can go on YouTube and just look up lo-fi. And there's like a very cute live stream with like a little cat and it's other people studying or just relaxing. And I like keeping that in the background and the imagery is nice and it just helps me like relax and set the winding down tone for my evening. So I really recommend either lo-fi or classical music. Um, this just helps. And I want to recommend too. I want to recommend um, you listen. I really like chill music. So I'll be like, hey, Siri, just play chill music. And, and I just, I like that kind of like vibe, like chill music. Um, candles, really nice, like smelly candles. If you are like $10 at CBS, or you can just order, but like just getting good smells and good. So um, now playing. <laughs> We're getting chill music. Yay! I'm getting chill music in my house. Okay. Listen to how calming. Here, a sample. We have a sample. Isn't that so calming? It's super calming, right? We can barely hear it. That's so funny. Let me make it louder. That is so funny. Here, you hear that? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So this is a great example of, I'll make it lower, but this is such a great example, like chill music. And I just like sit, work on chill music, like really take time to reduce your stress. And conversely, do not listen to like really intense music. Don't listen to like just anything very aggressive. Like now's not the time to listen to like that Peloton music that's like super loud. Like not now, like you just need super chill music, candles, um, I don't know, like any incense, like stuff that just smells good, feels good. You need that vibe, you need that like good energy. And that's before every like major test and before like every major stressful occasion, you need to have that like zen. All right, we'll keep going. Yeah, and I want to emphasize that this isn't just something that you should do the day before the exam. This is something that you can start doing two weeks before the exam or at least a few days before the exam because you put your entire body and mind at ease and into this routine of relaxing. Um, and you don't want to sort of like boost, like you don't want to listen to music that's going to induce your anxiety the night before the test. Um, so again, the takeaways is that soft music can be very effective for relaxation and stress management. And you guys, we have so many resources for online. Um, so instead of like looking up silly things on YouTube or mindless things on YouTube, um, you can use it to find like real outlets for relaxation and really cool music and uh, really cool artists that provide these kinds of relaxation type of music. 
Okay, so this next tip is about sleeping. And this is something I feel really, really strongly about. So I'm going to put five stars. Um, So (laughs) our whole generation has such a messed up sleep schedule. um, And it's because of social media. It's because of cell phones. It's because of the blue light that emanates from all of our screen time. So just right now, I'm looking at my laptop screen. I'm looking at my iPad simultaneously. And oftentimes, it's not just because of social media. I mean, our entire school life is on these devices. So um, I sympathize. I empathize. Like I'm, I'm bad with it too, right? Like we're on these screens all day, but the problem is that it really changes our circadian rhythm, which is how our mind regulates our sleep and wake cycles, and it's a big problem, especially because when we mi- when we wind down for the night, we're finally like, oh, we're done studying. Like it's time to go on TikTok. It's time to go on my phone so I could relax. But it's actually really detrimental to your sleep, like extremely detrimental to your sleep wake cycle. And studies even show that even if you don't feel like you have trouble falling asleep, if you're on your screens before you go to sleep, like within 30 minutes to an hour before the type of sleep, like your actual sleep architecture and structure is different. And you don't get enough REM sleep, as much restful sleep. And without that REM sleep, first of all, like you guys are are children, you're still growing. So you absolutely need it like for your health. But second of all, you're studying and and your memories are not going to be encrypted into your long term memory um, if you don't get the right sleep architecture. So I'm going to go off my soft uh, my soapbox. But this is something that I really, really, really care about. Um, So as hard as it is, just try to put your phones on do not disturb just 30 minutes before you go to sleep. Like we're not asking for, you know, something unreasonable because I'm I'm also a student and I know that you can't, you know, like turn your phone off four hours before you go to sleep or not look at, at a computer four hours before you go to sleep. But half an hour before you go to sleep, just click do not disturb. And instead of you know, focusing on your computer or your phone for relaxation, you can practice mindful meditation. So this is a technique that allows you to just focus on yourself, focus on what you're sensing, what you're feeling in the moment. And you can use our sort of like imagery techniques that we learned for SHSAT to go through mindful meditation. So you can think about oh, what do I smell right now? What do I feel? Like focus on feeling how the clothes feel on your body, how your covers feel on you. Focus on just noticing like just how you feel, what you smell, what you taste, what you see in your room, just basic practices. Um, And by focusing on these things, we quiet down all the noise in our head. You quiet down the voice that's like, oh my God, my SHSAT is in two weeks and I'm really nervous. And you quiet down the voice of like, oh my God, I have to get up at 7 a.m. tomorrow to go to school. And I have this after school activity. So all those background voices that we always have on in our subconscious, they just get quieted down as you mindfully meditate and focus on the things that you are sensing and feeling in the moment. In those moments, it's also a really great time to start expressing gratitude for everything that you guys have accomplished so far. So you can say thank you to the universe or whatever, whoever you believe in for um, for this day, for the fact that you guys have come so far, that you guys are all amazing students, that you have the opportunity to sit for this exam, that you've had the opportunity and so many um, hours to dedicate in your life to practice, that you guys have families that support you, that you guys have this community, all of us here at Queller Prep that support you. Um, so all of that will just kind of relax you and recenter your brain on what to focus on instead of focusing on all the Ooh, anxiety type thoughts. Um, so what this does is it's going to slow the way that you breathe. It's going to relax your mind. They actually did studies where they put little electrodes in your brain and they literally find that your brain waves change as people practice this. So as silly as it may sound to some people, it's proven, it's, it's research, it's evidence-based, and this really makes a big difference. Um, for how you go through your day and how you conduct yourself and kind of this, the headspace that you're in um, when you go to take an exam. So mindfulness will help reduce stress. Um, Spending too much time planning or like problem solving or daydreaming or thinking negative or random thoughts is extremely draining. 
So mindfully meditating takes the power back into your control of what you want to spend your brain energy thinking about. Um, It makes you less likely um, to be stressed or anxious or have signs of depression. Um, And it allows you to pull away from negative thinking and instead positively engage with the world um, around you. So huge proponent of mindful meditation, of expressing gratitude, um, and of getting good sleep. It's so important to get good sleep. So I totally want to... add to the whole sleep thing. And by the way, I'm still playing chill music in the background. So I just want to share how nice it is. So I have the music. Hear that? You hear that, everybody? Um, So I want to just add, as you know, so with Queller Prep and with my lifestyle, I also have three kids and I run the business. I'm busy, 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 busy. So something else that you should know about just meditating and about mindfulness I always make sure I go out of my way to make sure I get enough sleep hours. So you do need, there is REM. If you've ever researched sleep, there's REM one, then there's deep sleep. You need to make sure that you get deep sleep. Do not expect to get deep sleep the night before the SHS 18. You need it the week. So if you could actually write that down, Olga, make sure that you get deep sleep the week before the test. This isn't something you're going to do like, oh, I'm just going to stay up every single night. And then the night before I'll get great sleep. Like it's not happening. The best thing that you can do right now is plan the whole week, plan a sleep schedule so that you're really resting your mind. And when you wake up, I also do something else with work. It's kind of like a hack. So I avoid taking like phone calls. I avoid emails. I avoid every anything stressful before I've had breakfast. So do nothing stressful until after you had breakfast and after you had food. So for example, sometimes I'll get a work phone call. Please make sure to call me. I need to speak to you in the morning. I'm like, nope, I didn't eat. I didn't have a meal. I haven't had water. Like just make sure you do not like, really give yourself like a peaceful time to wake up in the morning and then start your day. All right. So keep that in mind. All right. Go ahead. Yeah. And just to echo, like the night before your exam, the night before a lot of my exams, I actually can't fall asleep because I'm so nervous about the test and I'm like nervous that I'm going to miss my alarm clock or something. But I don't go into my test exhausted, even if I didn't get like the best deep sleep the night before, because the whole week I'm actually sleeping and getting adequate sleep. And also a sleep schedule, like if you've been sleeping poorly, like for the last month, you can't just decide tonight is the night that I'm going to, you know, get excellent sleep. It takes a few days for your body to adjust to an earlier sleep schedule, especially since your exam will be early in the morning. Um, So you want to make sure that you are on that sleep schedule, uh, at least for a week, if not two weeks. So you got it's something that you should be implementing in your lives like today or tomorrow this week. So trying to go to sleep early and trying to wake up early um and wake up early even on the weekends just to you know maintain that sleep structure and schedule so that it's just a routine for you guys on test day and here are some videos that you can find online about um meditation um, that are linked in the email that we sent you guys and this just has nice calm relaxing music and nice pictures and a nice voiceover that will sort of guide you through the meditation if it's something that you guys want to try um, so now this one is arriving at the test center so Different students will be taking the SHSAT in different places. So some of you guys will just be going to your middle schools. Others, there is a specific central test location that the DOE will let you know about. Either way, you want to arrive at the test center early because you want to enter calmly. Um, If your parents are driving you, you want to make sure that there's going to be an appropriate space for them to drop you off, or you want them to be able to find parking in time. Um, Also, like if you've never been to this location before, if it's not your school, you want to make sure that you leave earlier just to make sure that if there's any traffic, if you get lost, if you get confused and you can't find the location. So you just want to basically plan for any type of worst case scenario and such that if that worst case scenario happens, you'll still 
be there on time and it won't be stressful because you left so much room for error. Um, Once you're inside, do your best to ask where the bathrooms are and where the exits are Um, because you don't want to be losing time and scrambling just looking for the bathroom. And once your test is over, you want to be able to exit in a calm fashion as soon as possible. Get out of there. Enjoy your freedom. Um, now, the the downside of coming early is that you might have to wait in line for a long time um, before they actually allow you inside. Um, so make sure that you take food or that you take money. There may be vending machines available. We'll talk more about food. And we've already mentioned like just having a snack, especially when you wake up in the morning, you might like be kind of nauseous and not want to eat because you're nervous. Some people don't like eating early in the morning. Um, And after you've been awake for about an hour, that's when you actually might get hungry right before. So food is really important for you at this stage. Um, And you could even bring a Queller packet to skim lightly. Again, nothing crazy, nothing new, but if it would make you feel better to have a little Queller support packet with you, um, you absolutely can do that. Something very, very light that you will have to throw out before you enter the exam room. Um, And again, when you are on that long line, choose who you want to surround yourself with. Um, For some of you, you'll feel really good with a friend. That friend makes you feel good. That friend makes you feel calm. For other people, having people that are, you know, like buzzing and talking about exams and bringing up crazy formulas that you've never heard of that are not even pertinent to the SHSAT, um, those are just going to make you more anxious, right? So you don't have to expose yourself to that. You can just say, hey, I'm really nervous. I'd rather, you know, be with strangers. I'd rather stand alone. And you could put in your your headphones if you want and, and listen to your calm music while you're standing online for that test. Um, the people that are next to you, it's not just people that you're hanging out with online. They're most likely going to wind up next to you in your test room. So if somebody is incredibly annoying, if you've been with somebody before and they have this habit of shuffling or tapping their foot or some other annoying habit that annoys you and distracts you, try to separate yourself from them. Um, because again, putting yourself first in these instances is so, so, so important. And here's another little life hack is that there's a diner just one block away from the LIC site in Queens. So um, you could uh, actually get to the location, settle in and then get food once you arrive if you want. Or it's just nice to know that there is this spot that you can um, go to with your families or your friends after you finish the exam to celebrate. Um, Well, I also want to just add with the food like don't eat at home a huge meal, then take the subway or the train or the bus or your parents drive you. Um, do not do that. Make sure you eat. Ah, my little cutie is here. Hello. Thank you. Say good luck, everybody. Good luck. I you. So the last thing you want to do is have a situation where you had food three hours before the exam. So there's plenty of food. All of these DOE test centers have food. So just eat before. And if you're taking it at school, just pack food. Take food with you and make sure you're eating familiar food. Nothing like brand new. Okay, save that for later. All right, go ahead. And here's just the diner that we were talking about next to the LIC site in case you guys are taking your test there and want to check it out. Um, And here are all the different locations of um, potential test sites. Okay, so now we've gotten to the food, right? So we've been kind of hinting at this and mentioning lots of different things about food as we've been going, but this is the one that's dedicated entirely to food, the slide or the stress management tip that's dedicated to food. So make sure that you are eating before your exam, as Mrs. Queller was just saying. Um, So your brain needs energy from food to work efficiently. So you want to be um, focusing on your exam and not focusing on your stomach rumbling or the fact that you're starving during your test. Um, If you're a person that doesn't eat in the morning, um, you can try different things. You can try like a small snack, like a granola bar. You can try um, protein shakes or smoothies that are filled with like fruits. 
Um, you can also try to wake up early, not have breakfast, and then eat at the site, like we're saying. Um, because at that point, once you're awake, um, a little bit, you kind of will stomach the nausea better. Um, so while we suggest that you guys eat anything that your heart desires, make sure that you're not eating anything brand new. If you're somebody that has never had peanuts in your life, um, the morning of the SHSAT is not the day to, to eat peanut butter and have an allergic reaction. The morning of the SHSAT is not the day to try something brand new and you end up in the bathroom with diarrhea, God forbid, or you end up with like intense stomach pain. Um, nothing new. Things that you know that you're comfortable with, things that make you feel good when you eat them, your favorite foods. Um, try to have a mix of things that, you know, are your comfort food, um, like your little snack, but also brain boosting foods, right? Things that are going to keep your brain with a lot of energy throughout the test. Um, so these are things like eggs, nuts, yogurt, cottage cheese. They're all filled with healthy fats, healthy lipids, with, which our brain needs to function. Um, other things that you guys can eat for breakfast is like whole grains, cereal, you can eat milk, you can eat toast with jam, porridge, oatmeal, walnuts, blueberries, sunflower seeds, dried fruits, figs, all of these are just delicious options um, that you can eat in the morning. But again, tailor it towards yourself. Um, make sure it's something that you like, that you're comfortable with, and that you've had before. Nothing, nothing brand new. And this is a little picture I pulled from the internet of foods that support brain health. So I'm going to circle dark chocolate, which we've already talked about, um, olive oils, um, turmeric is a great, great spice that helps with memory um, and um, also like joint health, which is random and not re relevant to this. But anyway, the point is your diet is important. What you eat the morning of is important. It's important both like, like, physiologically, like what it actually does to your brain. But it's also important metal mentally and psychologically because food makes us happy. We all have comfort foods. We all have foods that we like and we don't like. So you want to walk into the test as comfortable and as happy as possible. Um, okay. And this one is called the lucky charm stress management tip. So everybody may have a different lucky charm. Um, the way that I grew up, my parents always had this um, superstition that you need to go into the test with like, like, I don't even know how to tell you, like rice, like uncooked rice grains in your pocket. So that's what I've been doing. Um, everybody has their own um, thing. It can be a penny. It can be a present somebody gave you, a favorite pencil, a bracelet um anything that is a reminder to you that you have good luck and anything that just makes you feel supported right um i don't really believe in this like rice thing like i don't know if that really helped me you know ace all my exams but it's something that i remember like from childhood so it just makes me feel like supported and comfortable that i have that and even when i took my passport and um I didn't even like I, I went separately from my parents already. Um, I still did that for myself just because it's a habit and it made me feel really comfortable and supported. Um, Mrs. Francis's world, words here that she has fond memories of how her mom would pack two pennies, handmade charm bracelet and a piece of dark chocolate and a pure clear a Ziploc bag for her as she sat for all of her exams. Um, and it worked and I can say it worked for me too. And here I just put a little, you know, good luck charms um, thing. So whatever it is in your culture and your family um, or in your religion that is good luck for you, or it doesn't even have to be religious. It can be like a little piece of your blankie from when you were a kid, whatever makes you feel comfortable and supported, um, 100% bring it to the test. Even if you can't actively have it on you, just knowing that it's in proximity can make you feel better. And I want to add, this stuff works. I mean, these are literally things. These things definitely work because it gives you good energy. And good energy will absolutely work. Praying works. Meditating works. Chill music works. A lucky charm works. I mean, it's religious artifacts. It works also. I mean, any the evil eye over there. I mean, I've had plenty of those little over the years purchases. So like anything that you feel is going to give you a sticker, a smelly sticker, just anything that you feel is going to channel good energy. So definitely 
bring something little and you know that it's your lucky charm to this exam. And for sure, it's going to work because the good energy is going to be around you. And that's what you need to work. Okay. Um, and as I said earlier, you're surrounding yourself with good energy in terms of people, but also in terms of objects. You just want to be building a fortress of good energy. Like that's all you need. It's just good energy. Like right before, like a sports game, you'll have the cheerleaders, right? Jumping and like, kind of like super excited. Like you want to get like, I know that I have this good energy right before the test, right before a game, right before an athletic competition. So keep that in mind also. All right. Okay, now this one is for both the parents and the students. Um, it just keeps going back to the same themes that we are sort of forwarding in, in these um, stress management tips. Um, write an encouraging letter. Um, remind for the parents, it's time you could write one for your kids. Remind them that this is just the te a test, right? We want all of you guys to be successful, but we're extremely proud of you guys just for undertaking this journey, just for sitting for this exam, just for studying so hard as it is, regardless of what the outcome is. And um, sometimes it's best to hear that. It's good to hear that from anybody, but when it comes from your parents, it, it always feels a little bit different. Um, so it's important that the kids feel the support from the parents um, and they can read this letter the night before the test. It can help them feel relaxed and sleep. Um, and same thing for students. You guys can write yourself a letter. It's about self-reflection. This is also a way to meditate. Um, talk about all your emotions. This is a big milestone. Um, you might want to um, remind yourself and, and talk positively about yourself in this letter about how far that you've come. And again, talking about yourself positively yields positive energy and positive results. And all of this will allow you guys to manifest that positive energy to, to just surround yourself with it. And also, it's just a really nice exercise. It's something that you guys can look back on later, like when you sit for your SAT in a few years or your other graduate school exams. You can remember this moment as that was the first big test that I took. And this is what I felt like at that time. Um, and it can just be a memento for yourself um, for the future. Um, and I want to add also when you're ready, if I could. So obviously many of you know, you know, Quiller Prep has really grown and Olga has witnessed this transformation, um, exponential growth over the years. And by the way, I've also been so lucky to witness Olga going from high school student to college student to BAMD to she's a fourth year medical student now. So we both watched each other grow so much. But what we don't really hear is like how much positive self-talk did we give, you know, ourselves. You have to be your number one fan. You have to be your number one advocate. Think about it practically. If you go into the exam and you're like, oh, I'm going to fail. I can't do this. I'm such a loser. I have no idea what I'm doing. I mean, do you really think like positive self-talk doesn't matter? There's no way. Like I would never tell myself, there's no way Olga before she took a medical school exam is going to say, oh, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm going to fail. I'm so nervous. I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh my God, I'm shaking. Like there's no way that that is going to not create, you know, any, the influence in your outcome. So you want to make sure that you believe in yourself and you communicate. I also want to share with the growth of this business, which has truly been exponential. There are thousands, tens of thousands of book sales and students and we have international customers, like, holy moly. It's kind of odd. Like, I'll walk into a room, they're like, Queller's famous. Did you know that? Did you? I'm like, uh, kind of. I heard about it. So I'm just letting you know. I mean, how many times did people say no? How many times were people negative? Like, no, you're not going to succeed. You're not going to accomplish. You're not going to win. You're not going to. I mean, I heard no more times than I can count. But I believed in myself and that's what I want to share with you. This test is also about like you believing in yourself. You need to go into this test and say, you know what? I can totally do this. I've studied. I know the questions. I know the material. I've sacrificed so many hours. I believe in me, myself, and I. I absolutely believe in myself. Like, can you imagine a doctor before a surgery being like, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm so bad at this and I don't know what I'm doing. Like that is definitely, you You would never pick that search in. So make sure that you make it clear that you believe in yourself and writing yourself a love letter. 
I'm all for it. Like, I don't know. I just love it. I love the energy. Um, you know, as funny as this is the whole Miley Cyrus thing where I can buy myself flowers. I'm actually like not kidding. Like I will buy myself flowers. Like I really like blue roses. Whenever I see them, I buy them. So I'm just telling you, like, get yourself a gift, get yourself, go shopping the week before, get yourself something you like, get yourself a treat, love yourself before this exam. You need to love yourself. Okay. Take care of yourself. Do something that will make you happy and make you feel good before this test. And it's perfectly fine if it's an hour of video games. It's perfectly fine if it's like walking your dog or whatever it is, it's just going to chill you out and put you in a good mood and give you good vibes. Okay. So just remember that like the, the goal is good, happy energy and reminding yourself how much you accomplished. Too often people focus on the negative, not the positive. It's actually pretty sad. It's so easy. Did you know that with the news, people are 10 times more likely to watch bad news than good? And that says a lot, right? It's sad. It's a sad, like, reality of society. We gravitate and we want to hear, you know, just, just don't. We don't want to hear the negative. So let's keep going to the next tip. Just one more point. I also feel like sometimes it's not every day is not your best day, right? Like you don't always wake up in the morning and think, you know, like I'm the best medical student. Like I don't wake up every morning thinking that everybody has, you know, down days. But one thing that helps me, like, especially through med school is like fake it till you make it. So even if you're not feeling it, just waking up in the morning and saying like, I am smart. I'm worthy. I got into med school. I've gotten this far for you guys. Like I've studied. I woke up, you know, 7 a.m. every Saturday. I went to my Queller classes. After school, I listened into these webinars. I studied. I took these exams, these practice tests. I did well. Just saying it or writing it down, hearing those true positive things out loud will change your mindset even if you are having those down days and the more you practice this the more you'll just see that your thoughts shift naturally so it'll it'll be a natural process and you won't have to try to be positive it'll just be the way that you think about things and even when things don't go your way you'll learn to just extract the positive out of it um, and not see the negative and it really changes the way that you are as a student but broader the way that you go through life and problem solve um, so this is a cute little note that a parent wrote, um, you know, to their child. Um, okay, so for this, um, this is similar to what we were saying before. Um, try to pick a location where you will meet either your friends or your parents after the exam. And my recommendation is try to make it like a block away or something like that. The test site, like, you know, has hundreds of students and it can get really crazy with a hundred parents with a hundred cars. There's a lot of traffic around the test site. So choosing an exact location one to two blocks away, um, helps you, you know, find your parents or your friends quickly and um, get out of there quickly and be free faster and also just like not be disorganized after your test. You kind of walk out of these tests like, you know, confused and tired and everything. Um, so you don't want this to just be an extra point of stress once the test is finally over. Um, and again, because you likely won't have your exam, your phone on you, um, because you can't bring your phone into the exam room, um, this also saves that stress of you won't have your phone to communicate with your parents or your friends. Um, so you know exactly where um, you're expecting to meet each other. Okay, so for the te the the um, for the day of the test. Um, and the day before the test, obviously the day of the test, you guys are not going to go to school the day of the, the, the day before the test, like we said, no new studying, but even broader since the test is on a Wednesday, um, I think the day before is election day. So you guys should already have it off for November 7th. Um, but for those students that maybe don't, um, consider just resting and taking the day off. Um, and parents consider letting your, your kids take the day off. If you guys want perfect attendance, you can just come in in the morning, um, and get your attendance and then leave. Um, or if you don't care about attendance, you can just, um, you know, sleep in, make sure that you get those hours of restful sleep the night before. Um, 
and just spend some time relaxing, um, listening to relaxing music, doing some sort of activity that allows you to be outdoors. There's a lot of studies about sunlight um, and um, exposure to sunlight and your mood and your ability to perform. Um, a lot of study about a lot of studies about electricity. Also, um, not electricity. I'm so sorry. Um, activity, physical activity, is what I meant to say. Um, and then also we've been really lucky in New York. The weather has still been really nice in the afternoons. So hopefully it stays that way. So you guys are able to, you know, go outside, get that crisp, fresh autumn air, look at the beautiful leaves, enjoy that like fall New York day, at least for a few hours. Um, so don't do anything stressful the night before the test. Um, cannot, cannot um, stress that enough. And this is a super cute picture of a little dog. Um, so if you have a pet, spend time with your pet, anyone or anything that makes you happy, anything that is physical and allows you to get outdoors in some sun um, is extra brownie points. Okay, so this is answering the question that somebody was asking before in the chat. Um, you don't have to bring a watch, but we strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that you guys bring a watch and that you set it to 12 o'clock. So what happens when you set it to 12 o'clock is that every minute, basically you're like restarting the clock, right? So from 12 to three is um, what is going to be how much time has passed um, once you start the test. Mm -hmm. So that way you don't have to spend time like doing subtraction and thinking, okay, it's 8 a.m. Now it's 9.05. That means an hour and five minutes passed. No, because if it's 12 and then it's 105, you know that an hour and five minutes passed. If it's 1245, you know, 45 minutes passed. If it's 230, you know, two hours and 30 minutes passed. So this is another life hack. It doesn't matter what the actual time is. Um, just set it from to 12 o'clock. So you know that you have between 12 to three to finish. Um, I like not wearing a watch on my test day because it kind of annoys me as I'm writing and it like bothers me. And I also just like having it straight in my field of view so I can always glance at it quickly and just see that I'm pacing myself. Um, so that's my recommendation. Um, I like having a watch. If you guys don't have a digital watch, I would recommend getting one. Um, having to actually read the time is just gonna, it's just extra work. It's gonna extract time from your test. And relying on the um, test uh, proctor to do the time is just a no-go. I've had situations where the test proctors are just awful and they just never update the time. I've had situations where the clock in the room is wrong or doesn't work. And I mean, all of these things are technically testing violations and they shouldn't happen, but we can't control what other people do. We can't control what the situation is in your school that you're taking it. So it's just best to be prepared yourself. Um, and have a basic wristwatch um, that is digital. That is my best recommendation. And if you're one of the students that has any sort of extended time, so 504 test accommodations, make sure that those are in place. Make sure that those are clearly marked on your admissions ticket and make sure that they are respectful and aware of that accommodation as you go into the test day. And make sure that you know which times apply to you. So you know that you have one and a half times longer to have the test to take the test or four hours longer or double or whatever it is. Um, it's it's by case to case basis. So make sure that you're aware of that so you can be your best advocate. Okay. So this one, make sure that you go to the bathroom before your test. Even if you don't feel like you need to go, just make sure that you go. Um, just go, just try, just sit um, on the toilet and see. Um, make, being nervous can stimulate your bladder and make you want to use the bathroom um, like seconds into the exam so you just want to avoid that you want to avoid you want to just go in with an empty bladder um so you don't have to take time away from your test um while we are on this topic avoid drinking like don't you know force yourself to have a gallon of water as you go into the test avoid caffeine anything with caffeine or energy drinks these work as a diuretic um they're going to make you want to pee like more so than water, they're just going to make you want to lose water. 
um, from your body. And it's something that you should 100% avoid. Also, caffeine, Starbucks, energy drinks, all of those will give you a lot of anxiety. Um, and they will give you a sugar high and then you'll crash somewhere in the middle of the exam and you're going to feel awful and you're going to feel shaky, especially if this is, if you're not a coffee drinker, um, the day of the exam, the morning of the exam is absolutely not the time, um, to go for a Starbucks run. So these are things that you absolutely want to avoid and you do not want to, uh, be forced into taking, um, these bathroom breaks because you might like most likely though that time won't be given back to you. So if it takes you five minutes or 10 minutes to go to the bathroom, you're probably losing that time. Um, I will also say that relying on caffeine or an energy drink to kind of give you energy um, is not really the best thing to do on an exam. During an exam, your body is already kind of in fight or flight. You're already going to be producing all of these molecules and hormones like adrenaline and epinephrine because you're nervous. And then by putting more of that on you via an energy drink, instead of having like energy to keep you awake, Instead, that energy will be too much and that energy will turn into anxiety and it will call, cause you to underperform. So again, I can't stress it enough to kind of try to stay away from it um, as best as you can. You can treat yourself to a Starbucks immediately after the test is over, but not before. This is about what to wear. Um, it's, it's hard because we can't predict the temperature in the room. So usually what I like to do is layering. So make sure that you're wearing like a sweater or a hoodie that you can take off with like a nice comfortable t-shirt underneath. Um, I don't like being in clothes that are like too pajama-y because I like my body and my brain to feel like, you know, a little bit like I'm not at home in bed. Um, so I'm in that mindset of like, I have to take an exam, I have to perform, but I also don't want to be wearing like super tight jeans and like a blazer and like very professional and uncomfortable clothes. So find a medium that works for you, but definitely be comfortable in what you wear. Um, and wear layers so that you can take off or put on things depending on the temperature in the room because those are things that you cannot control. Um, if you have long hair, I would always, I always pack a hair tie with me um, and one or two because mine tend to rip sometimes because sometimes I like my hair down, sometimes I like it up and away from me so I can focus. Um, so make sure you're accounting for, for those kinds of things as well. Um, comfortable shoes also because that you're going to be wearing for the three hours um, so make sure nothing is like pressing you or bothering you or anything of that sort um, I would try on the outfit maybe the day before just to make sure that nothing is bothering me try not to wear anything new anything with like tags that could be scratching you or distracting you and try to lay out your clothes the day before the test um, so it's not something that you're even thinking about in the morning you want to limit the amount of decisions you have to make that morning you should know what you're going to eat you should know uh, what you're going to take with you you should know what you're going to wear so your brain can just focus on relaxing and retrieving all the information that you've studied instead of making all these little small decisions okay and that brings me to our last and final stress management tip which is just to breathe um, remember that at the end of the day, this is just a test. You guys will all go to high school, you guys will all graduate, and you guys will all succeed. Um, do your best to keep reminding yourself of that. Um, it's an important exam, but at the end of the day, all exams are just exams. Um, between the tests, try to constantly remind yourself, like, I'm doing great. I'm 10 questions closer to finishing. I'm doing great. I'm halfway done to finishing. Um, try to take deep breaths. If you need to take a stretch. You could absolutely do that. Um, it's, it's a challenging exam. It's a challenging experience. Um, and we just want you guys to be aware of that um, and understand that it's a marathon that you guys have been running this whole time. It's not a sprint. So you don't need to make any crazy adjustments to your studying the day before, the week before. Um, so with that, we just want to wish you good luck. Um, from the bottom of my heart, I love hosting these webinars with you guys. I love teaching you guys. Um, we just really want you to, you know, go into this as confident as possible, as calm as possible, and just know that you have so many people rooting for you. I will be thinking of all of you um, on all those exam days. 
Um, and we'll also be hosting two more webinars next week. So this isn't goodbye, but just make sure that you, as much as you focus on studying, focus on your own mental well-being because it's going to benefit your test performance and it's just going to be good for you also. So I think that's everything I want to say. Francis, do you want to add? I feel like I'm very grateful that we are able to also chat with everyone. So we did put the link in. So if you could take a moment to leave us a love because we are finishing up. So you guys have the chat in your chat. Um, if you could do that for a moment. Um, some people had asked questions about the test center location. All of that can be found in my school's Apple Watch. They're definitely not going to allow an Apple Watch. Mm -hmm. um, your cell phone, you could probably keep it in the room, but keep it on silent. Keep it away. Make sure it's not on vibrate. Not even um, on silent. I would turn it off. So make sure that it's just completely off. Like Because if you get like an Amber Alert or something, even if it's on silent, it'll go off. So just I keep it completely off. <laughs> There's a question, as we said earlier, about the mechanical pencils. Definitely, it's better to use the regular standard pencils. Um, let's take a moment, everyone, to go off mute and to really, like, give Olga... Actually, let's take a minute to type thank you. So let's type thank you in the chat because that's, like, our documented memory. So we're going to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because we have been a busy bunch, Okay. And if you could tell us the review, how much you, um, I think that's really good for us as well. So, okay, now that we got our thank yous out of the way, I am going to put everyone off mute. Oh, that's so cute. So everyone, we're going to count to three. Ready? Set. We're going to count to three. Thank you, all. Go thank, one. You. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. I hope that this was beneficial. I hope that all the webinars are beneficial. I hope that we see all of you guys on November 6th and 7th, where we'll be hosting our last two webinars. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to stick around for the next five to 10 minutes. Um, or if not, then please go and enjoy your evening. Try to relax, stay off your phones before you go to sleep. Try to actually implement all of these tips that we talked about. Um, and the more that you implement them starting today will make it a lot easier for you the days leading up to your test. Okay, and we have it. I'm actually listening to chill music the entire time that you ran the webinars to like get in the zone. Okay. Thank you again, everyone. And um, oh, that's been so good. Good luck, everyone. Is that so funny? We have like music matching the whole like weather in the ocean. So water. This is my favorite webinar from everything that we run at Clover. This is straight up my favorite one. Okay. Me too. Thank and you. honestly, it reminds me to take it easy, yeah, to be grateful. Sure. Yeah, same. All right, everyone. Good luck. Good luck. Bye, everybody. Good luck. Good night, guys. Bye. Thank you so much. Does anybody have any questions before I end it for everybody? somebody is asking me about time management um so this is something i can talk more about um next week when we like you know have our active um active webinars um but about time management it's not something that is new to you right so you should have been you should be practicing full lengths so you should approximately know um how you are managing your time so it shouldn't be like all the time you've been finishing on time and on test day, something happens and all of a sudden you're out of time. If you're in the situation where you are anticipating that you may run out of time on the test day, that is something that you can prepare for. Um, so what you should force yourself to do now as you're practicing is force yourself to move on from a question, force yourself to pick an answer and move on from a question, even if you don't know, even if you need that extra time. 
Um, there's a lot of space in math to move faster. Um, you can estimate a lot of questions instead of doing the full arithmetic. You can use the multiple choice to your advantage and like know that the answer should be somewhere in the hundreds and eliminate all the answers that are in the ones and in the thousands. And all of that can help you move faster and save time. Um, also, you guys are very lucky because you have the full three hours and you can move through the sections as you please. Um, so use that to your advantage in terms of time management. Um, you can also get away with not reading some of the reading passages, especially if you struggle with understanding them. And if you uh, find that even after reading them, you are you know not understanding them. So you can just save those five or four minutes from reading them entirely. Um, so all of those are just some tips that I can, um, you know, briefly mention, but it's important to be actively taking the practice test with a uh, timer so you can see how you're managing your time and you can see as you're behind, you can for you can make the choice, right? Like during the test to work faster instead of just passively like hoping that, oh, this time I'll finish fast enough. You know what I mean? So I would try to implement those changes. Um, into your studying routine for these next few days. And then we can reconvene um, at the next webinar. You guys can always email me at olgabamd um, at quellerprep.com. And um, we can talk more about it. Um, do you have any tips for practicing reading faster? Um, annotation helps me read faster. Skimming certain passages, the grammar passages, I don't recommend that you even read them. I recommend you go straight to your your. Um, questions. And finally, just, I mean, it's harder now because our time frame for the test is about like two to three weeks, depending on when you take it. But just reading a lot in general outside of the SHSAT will just increase your reading speed and comprehension. Um, and then somebody's asking what light studying includes. So that just includes reviewing. So nothing new. You can skim through old exams that you did. You can look at your notes. You can look at your notes from the webinars, things that I've highlighted and said to review or to have memorized before the test, but nothing brand new. All right. Thank you guys so much. Have a good night. And I hope I'll see you guys all um, next week. Bye.